Hello, hello, hello. Let's check in with the first nine chapters of The Gangster, uh, book number six in the Galactic Football League series by Scott Sigler, uh, 2020 novel, I believe, um, which I just reread, re listened to, uh, book number five in the series, which uh, ended with. Uh, Ended with Jonathan Sandoval, a um, reporter who had been hired by the Krakatonian Krakatonian Empire to check out on exactly how many uh, worshippers Quentin Barnes had accumulated as a... uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just distracted here momentarily because we indeed do have a raccoon going across the back of our fence here and going gingerly because the fence is rickety okay sorry (laughs) joys of recording outside at midnight uh yes all right so where was i yes that um the bass book they they won the football game, but there was there was an attack by this Jonathan Sandoval and um, one of the former Zoroastrian uh, league members, uh, a uh, purist nation, uh, racist racist fellow from racist culture, as was Quentin Barnes from, though he's left that behind to lead this the INF Krakens. God, I'm doing a hash job. All right, let's let's try this again because we want to want to be a smooth reviewer on this channel. Um, so yes, last book, uh, Quentin Barnes, 700 Years in the Future, has won, uh, the, won the, uh, the big Super Bowl of, of the time, the, uh, of, of, this, of this time, um, leading his team of various aliens to victory, uh, but with, with great cost. Um, the attack that happened just before had killed his uh, his coach, and he had actually had to kill the guy who was trying to kill them, Jonathan Sandoval, a super modded human who had been hired by various people, but looks like he had been, in the end there, hired by the Abernathy to take Quentin out. Quentin took him out. And this book is opening just right, right after it. Quentin is on uh, the commissioner's, Commissioner Rob Prost's, Prost, Prost, um, uh, ship, highly armored ship, uh, getting kind of debriefed as well as kind of medically examined. His arm is really fucked up. He couldn't, he wasn't quarterback for the final game. He uh, had to, he was in, he was on defense instead. Um, well, he, first he was both, both defense and offense actually. Um, but, uh, Yes, he his arm is really screwed up, um, and it's one of these things of like it's a career-ending injury, and it would have been, except that the coach, the the doctor on um, the commissioner's thing says actually there is a treatment. However, it's a treatment which it's only on offered on Earth. You have to get screened, and a lot of people don't even make it past the screening thing. And of the people they've treated, uh, it worked on one. And the other four, four found it the pain so horrible, they committed suicide. So it's a really doubtful, and it could really lead to just horrible consequences. But Quentin's like, no, I'm going to do it. Doesn't tell his uh, fiance, um, well, about to be his fiance, Becca, about this. Um, he just says, like, we're going to go there and do that. And, you know, get them to come with. It's super dangerous because, yes, there does seem to be a concerted effort to kill him. He's keeping it to himself that it's probably the Abernathy, this oncoming um, um, armada of uh, wasp-like ships. So I'm assuming they're bug-like themselves. <clears throat> and, um, yes, so he, that he's going, he's going to do that. At the same time, he is basically suffering... Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. 
He's having flashbacks of Hoker's death. He's having flashbacks of killing John, shooting Jonathan Sandoval in the head in self-defense. Like the guy would totally have killed him in a second if uh, he hadn't killed him first. Um, which is really messing him up. They go to the funeral of Hokar. It's not a funeral. It's a solidity. It's what it's called where, um, they put him, his essence, he is cremated and his, 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 uh, things is put into a gem, uh, which is supposed to go to a Shemakath, which is, uh, Greedock, the split head, the owner of the Inath Krakens, but it doesn't. He, uh, apparently had even, he had organized this two years beforehand, goes to Quentin and it's like, the, the, the thing, the advice is never, ever show this to Greedock or else he'll probably kill you for it. Um, at least that's the implication. And also they didn't hold this solidity ceremony at the Kraken's thing. They held it at the, the place where, um, Hokar got his start. The very first place he was a cap, a, a, a um, a coach which is also a slap, a very public slap in the face of uh, Greedock. Um, and we get a cool thing of uh, just like one of the cool kind of um, narrative techniques that Sigler uses is that they have uh, sports commentators come on and do like their show. And we get one which is basically kind of an overview of um, Hokar's career. Um, and, you know, all cu- cu- culminating with Quentin Bar getting Quentin Barnes and, you know, with him leading him, leading them to victory. Um, <clears throat> so they do that. They have the solidity um, thing where he doesn't, where Greedock doesn't even get to speak last. He get he speaks second of three speakers. The third speaker being a guy who is basically the president of the Quith Concord, which um, Hokar was Quith. This is kind of all a part of what, you know, basically Quentin is a part of. Uh, and so he speaks at it and even wants to speak to Quentin afterwards, which he kind of does. And, you know, he's very much a politician and he has kind of words that either are, you know, profound and inspiring or are kind of platitudes that, you know, I just, a politician would say, and it's like, but like totally clear on which one it is. Um, and you know, kind of a, he's got a greasy kind of, uh, handler who says, oh, and here's, here's his, his, um, his, uh, address. Don't, please don't, uh, feel, feel free to call us. If you ever are the quick can court and you would like to get a hold of us kind of, it's like, we'll take your calls, which, you know, he's apparently Quentin is the most recognizable sentient in this, in the entire empire. So it's not surprising that he'd probably want to kind of take his call at this point, whether that would, you know, last anything past when he was politically useful to the guy. Mm, probably not. So Quentin is pretty fucked up at this point. He has a, in, in, has a encounter with Richmond, his, um, the head of one of the now sp- split up churches of Quentin Barnes has been fake split up. So I guess Richmond is still the head of the church of Quentin Barnes. Um, and you know, he's wearing lots of jewels and Quentin's like, Oh, I see you must've been doing quite well for yourself. It's like, Oh yes, yes. With you winning the thing, we, we our, our donations have, 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 um, increased thousands fold. And he's like, just the, yeah. and it's like all the people, poor people are starving. And it's like all the rich cats, rich fat cats are getting rich in, in, in religion. Like they were back in the purest nation. Uh, and it really sickens him, but he kind of bites his tongue on that. Clinton does have certain measures of control, though. He's probably really kind of, he's, he's sort of slipping. He, he proposes to Becca proposes to Becca in the middle of his grief and sorrow. And you can't help but think it's like, it's kind of a desperation move. Like he's clutching out for Becca, but it's, I don't know if it's the greatest way to start out a relationship. Uh, Becca's like, 
who gets married anymore? Because apparently marriage is not really a big thing outside of the Paris purest nation that where everybody gets married sort of like old, old school earth here, but, uh, it's not really seen as a thing that people do outside of that. But Becca, you know, takes it and they actually sleep together. Um, you know, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's taking refuge, you know, it's the way of taking refuge from death in life. It's like, you know, people talk about like, you know, people who are soldiers and, you know, intense, intense things happening and people, you know, it's like, you know, lots of death. It's like, well, let's do some life stuff, which is, you know, happens making sex, making babies, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. And apparently it's Quentin's first time. I mean, he is 23 years old and I think Becca's 22. So it's like, it's, it's always hard to remember that they are so young. It is hard to remember that. Um, cause in a lot of ways they're very responsible young people. They're, they're at the height of their careers. It's like a lot of other people in diff- other careers wouldn't be getting, you know, to that pinnacle until they're like their forties or fifties. But, you know, it's weird thing of professional sports where, you know, they're grizzled veterans, you know, they've been in it for like four years. It's like hard stuff on their bodies. They compare all their kind of injuries and Quentin is actually honest with somebody about like how, what, what all the pain he's in. It's like elite athletes run through their bodies really quickly and damage them terribly. And it's going to be lifelong consequences for that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that, and that's the thing that the way that Sigler kind of really kind of grounds his story. It's like, yeah, you believe this is an actual sport where people do stuff superhuman, but they do it at a terrible cost to their future and to how their bodies are. All right. I will leave it there. I will leave it there. And, uh, yes. Ah, <sighs> go upstairs and see how everyone's doing. More videos later.